If you're using a Logitech R400 or similar <laughs> uh, clicker remote, presentation remote for your Mac and are having any issues with it, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech, my name's Alec and uh, this video is all about this little thing. It's a uh, presentation remote clicker, <laughs> whatever the technical term is. And uh, I recently did a video about how I had uh, discovered or rather realised <laughs> that you could use it with uh, Ecamm Live to advance your scenes. Uh, now I've had this for number of years now use it for obviously presentations which is what it's intended for to advance my slides in either keynote or powerpoint and uh, yeah it's just a very simple thing it's got a couple of buttons on it so uh, left and right for advance to forward and next slide and then sort of come out of the presentation and then it's got a little laser pointer on it as well to point but obviously that's a little bit obsolete these days isn't it since we're all doing virtual presentations but anyway that is what we're talking about now uh, after I had posted that video I had somebody uh, post that they or comment rather that they had uh, been out and bought one specifically for this use case but then it wasn't working with the Mac and uh, so were worried a little bit that it was ne wasn't going to actually work and might have to send it back and I'm hoping that that isn't the case because this uh, particular model of uh, clicker <laughs> as I call them uh, is uh, pretty ubiquitous really in the world of uh, presentations and as I say I've been using it with my Mac for uh, quite a long time but uh, the reason why it might be confusing is because if you go to the Logitech website uh, which I shall do now just to show you it does actually say and by the way I linked to this in the uh, uh, description of my previous video so a link to it on Amazon to buy the exact model that I've got but when you go to Logitech and you scroll down the page, here's all the information about it and how great it is. And down here, we've got these different models. And if we have a look at the uh, specification, so this is the one that I've got. Uh, there's also this one, by the way, which is very similar. Uh, it's slightly more expensive, but it's got a little LCD display and displays things like slide number and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, but if we come down and look at the compatibility, it says Windows and there's no Mac there and it's not just a case of them forgetting to put it in because this one right next to it does have Mac so that is a little bit confusing and it's confusing to me as well because it says it's not compatible but I've been using it for years so it makes me wonder uh, exactly why that is I wonder if there's some sort of uh, technicality in there that it means it's not maybe entirely compatible out of the box or something like that I'm not sure but we'll get to the bottom of it today hopefully because I'm going to walk you through how to set it up and uh, I'll show you that there is actually software that you can down for it, download for it um, from Logitech themselves. So with that little bit of confusion in our way let's uh, try to move on <laughs> and uh, come down a little bit further in fact where is it it's a little bit up in fact and we've got this uh, uh, section here called downloads so if we click on view all downloads that will take us through. Oh, I have to actually click it, don't I? That would help. Always clicking the link, by the way, top tip, helps you to actually get through to the link. <laughs> so here is the downloads for the wireless presenter, the R400. And uh, show all downloads. So if we click on that button, then we've got choose your operating system. So either Windows or Mac. So if I come down to uh, Mac and I click on the only one that's available, by the way, that is just uh, seems to be giving me the sort of latest version. I'm on the latest version of uh, Mac OS. I've been using it, as I say, for uh, this particular one. I think I bought four years ago, something like that. So I've upgraded my Mac at every single update that there is. And uh, it's just worked flawlessly throughout all of those updates. So assuming that you're on a relatively new Mac and it is uh, uh, on the latest version of Mac OS then it should be all right and what we can do here is we can click on download now and uh, as I say mine's already working but I'm just going to go through the process of doing this just so that we can see uh, what there is and what to expect and it's downloading that now so as soon as that has downloaded I'm going to go into my downloads just here at the top and then I'll just launch it from there and so that's the one the presentation presenter pairing utility so if I just double click on that to open it up it should uh, so it's going to ask me make sure do I really want to open this program yes I do and in a little moment with a bit of luck it should pop up now the question is where is it opening 
That is the question. Ah, it's down in my dock and it hasn't actually shown. That's better. <laughs> so here you can see it is welcome to the Logitech Presenter Pairing Utility. Uh, it looks very similar to the one that I've got in my hand as well. So it looks like they have actually thought about this being available for the Mac because they've got the very same one in the logo. And we'll click on continue. I still don't know why it doesn't say Mac compatible on the website. I uh, can't get to the bottom of it. Now, here we go. Compatible receiver not found. Now, why is that? Uh, Whoopsie daisy. Uh, come to that one. Never mind. So it says compatible receiver not found. So let me just come down to my top down shot and I'll show you a couple of hardware setup steps that we need to take. So if I just come out of this for a moment and go into my top down shot, here I am with my little Logitech receiver. So there are a couple of things that I need to do. First of all, I need to take the Bluetooth receiver out from the bottom and I need to plug that into a USB socket. Now I still have a very old school <laughs> wired uh, extended keyboard from Apple and it's got these handy little USB sockets in the side. So if I just pop that in there, now I've got my Bluetooth receiver set in and then obviously batteries in and then there's a little power switch on the side. Sorry if this is very obvious. <laughs> I'm just going through all of the steps just in case because sometimes uh, it's the, the simple things that get overlooked, isn't it? So um, that is now plugged on and it's plugged, uh, pl plugged on, it's plugged in and it's switched on. <laughs> so now if I go back to my uh, screen sharing over here and I click on uh, compatible receiver not found. Right, well, let me try again. Let's, uh, so turn the device off again and back on. So I'm going to, uh, in fact, I've got another little screen that I could probably share with you here. One second. Uh, oh no, I'll do that one after. <laughs> Never mind. I'm uh, thinking out loud here. So I'm just literally going to switch it off and then I'm going to switch it on again. And there we go. It's just been found. So then I, it says my device has now been uh, connected. So if I click close, that is the setup process. Now, there is something that uh, might be an issue that hasn't cropped up during this process. And that's because I do also use a Logitech MX Master Mouse. So I do also have Logitech software on my computer and have done for ages. I've been using the Logitech uh, MX series since version one, uh, 10 years ago. I forget how long ago it was. Uh, these, by the way, are the, in my mind, the best mice in the uh, world of mice. <laughs> I'll leave a link to this one in the description as well. It's, uh, yeah, they're just, uh, they're just absolutely uh, a great. <laughs> so what I wanted to just mention though was sometimes when you install software you have to give the uh, software access to your computer's uh, security and privacy settings. Now if this needed access to that and it didn't already have that access then it would prompt you to do so in here. Um, but I'm just going to assume that it hasn't and I'll show you where you might want to check. So we're going to come into security and privacy. Now there are various different areas of this uh, particular thing, uh, this particular thing, that's not the correct term is it? <laughs> this particular section of the uh, system preferences window and so you're going to want to just have a look through here and in fact I'll just do this right now because I can show you the areas that you might want to check. In fact, let me just quickly come back to my uh, Safari window wherever it happens to be over here. Uh, so this actually tells us. So I'll, I'll run you through this web page uh, and then we can go back and check. So this is uh, a link to obviously all of these Logitech pages that I've linked to including the download page, the page about the presenter and this uh, page as well. They'll all be in the description. But it tells you here that Logitech presentation permission prompts on Mac OS Big Sur. Now I actually think that this is a actual piece of uh, Logitech presentation uh, software, maybe slightly different to what we're looking at, but still it tells you all of these different areas that Logitech might want access to in your computer. Uh, bear in mind as well that all this is doing is sending keystrokes to your Mac. So it is simulating the, uh, the forward and backwards, I believe is either the up and down or page up and page down button. And then you've got this one to exit the thing, the, uh, uh, the presentation is the escape key. Uh, so that's all it is doing. It's really just simulating these keystrokes in your computer. So some things that you may need to grant it permission to is uh, such as this access accessibility uh, input monitoring so input monitoring has got to be looking for these keystrokes so you can see that it tells you in here these different sections of that uh, uh, security and uh, what was it called again <laughs> it was called 
where is my uh, system preferences? There we go. It was called security and privacy. That's the word, privacy. So um, it's telling you here all the different sections that it may need access to. As I say, if it doesn't already have access to these, at the time that you do the install, it will prompt you to do this. But it may be because I've already got my, uh, as I say, my MX Master mouse uh, installed, then Logitech already has access to those areas with the other software that I've got from them. But if we come down here to, so things like accessibility, then somewhere in here, we should see uh, Logitech, I would guess. There it is. So uh, so this is the other software from Logitech, actually, Logi Options, uh, which is where you can uh, program your mouse or any other Logitech devices you've got. If you've got a, a Logitech wireless keyboard and that, that's all done through there as well. The old way that it did it was with the old MX Master mouses uh, or mice, <laughs> mouses. You had a separate little dongle, a bit like we've got with the presenter actually, and that used to be called the Logitech Unifying Receiver. And so you'd plug one of those in, and you just need one of those plugged into a USB, and then you could link any number of uh, different mice or um, uh, keyboards and things like that so that actually is the sort of legacy software the logitech unifying software um whereas this one logi options is the sort of replacement for that and actually now it's just all done over bluetooth you don't need any dongles with your logitech keyboards and mice and things like that so that is one place where it may be requesting access to uh, the other one is input monitoring so as i say so here we have got a logitech uh, control center so that is another uh, uh Logitech uh, process that is requesting access to our system so that is somewhere else that it may prompt you when you install it to uh, to go in and check that so it's just worth checking if anything has appeared in there and what you'll notice is there are some things uh, where there's no check mark and often when you install a piece of software it sort of installs itself in there but it's not actually checked. So if I uh, come and change these, you'll have to unlock your system preferences. So I'll click on that and I'll type in my handy uh, password <laughs> to allow access. And now we can actually edit these settings. So there are some things that are requesting access to my system. Uh, but they haven't been granted access uh, and it may be that when you install the software you'll have something in here by Logitech and you'll just go through and notice that it isn't actually checked so just do go and double check anything from Logitech or Logi L-O-G-I <laughs> if that's the correct pronunciation uh, and anything with a Logitech in it <laughs> then just make sure that those are checked and they have access they are just requesting access to things that they need to function pos uh, properly so uh, the Bluetooth they shouldn't have anything in there, I don't think, for this one because you are plugging in your own, uh, it's its own uh, sort of dongle. Um, whereas obviously this one is for my mouse, which is just working purely over the Bluetooth. So that's why it does require access to that. So if it is, if you've downloaded the software, you've got the dongle plugged in and it's switched on and you've gone through the process of installing that uh, presenter software and it's still not working then come and check in here but apart from that if I just come and give you a quick demonstration of how it should actually work um, what I've done is I've uh, in fact let me just quickly show you what I've done because it might uh, might be a benefit of uh, I'm going to do a video about how to get presentations into Keynote into sorry <laughs> into uh, Ecamm Live. But what I'm going to show you is just how I'm doing this with Keynote so that you can see how the presenter works because there is another thing that might be causing an issue, I think. Um, so I just want to cover that as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my demo mode and uh, I haven't actually adjusted my screen resolution. This is a 4K monitor, you see. So normally I make it 1080p so that it doesn't show up so big on the screen. So I hope you can still see that. I'm going to come out of my uh, that view. Uh, right, so here I have got um, a <coughs> excuse me, a keynote presentation, just a little sample presentation to show you the point. And now the way that I do presentations is if I'm doing them on my Mac, if I'm doing them on an external Mac, then that's actually better because it's not taking up my processor. And so you can have it coming in through a Elgato cam link or something like that. So it just shows up as another camera source. Um, but if I'm doing it on the Mac, then, uh, well, there's a couple of options. You can actually export it to a PDF and just bring the PDF into your um, Ecamm Live. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to show you it running on the Mac with uh, uh, in presenter mode. Now, if you don't have a um, uh, secondary monitor, then usually in the default settings of um, uh, Keynote, 
the uh, option that you have up here, play, is going to play it as a full screen presentation. But there is actually another option that some people don't realize, which is in the play menu at the top, you can also say play slideshow in window. And I've actually added that to the, the toolbar. So in case you weren't aware with Mac applications, you can usually right click on the top bar and go to customize toolbar and you'll see all the different options that you have available to put in the toolbar. Excuse me. I've obviously been talking too long, so sorry about that. <laughs> and here you can just see all the different options that you have available. Uh, so you can just add those in. You can see how they're all sort of jiggling about a little bit at the moment. So somewhere in there, there is the play in window. I'm just trying to find it in this sea of uh, <laughs> icons. Uh, so there it is. It's this one play in window. Uh, it looks like a slideshow icon with a little play button, but just with two windows, funnily enough. So if I come out of here and I click play in window, and what that's going to do is it's given me this full screen window with my presentation and it should also give me uh, somewhere a little uh, preview as well. So that is in uh, the window if it's not showing already. Uh, beg your pardon, I need to be in clicking there. I think this is normally on by default, but anyway, I'll just find it. Window uh, view, uh, my key out, window. Well, this is not quite going. There we go. It's in play. <laughs> so play slideshow in window, but you can also show presenter display in window as well. So this is the one that is going to show you uh, the slides that we are on and then also the upcoming slides. So it's kind of good to have that up if you want to just uh, see what slides are coming up. So sometimes if I am doing presentations and I've got this on one screen, uh, then I might have this just sort of up above my camera below my camera which is right there so I've got that there so it just means that I can see what is coming up next so that's the kind of presenter view and you can have that window in window now what we're going to do is we're going to get this presentation into Ecamm so because it's just windowed like this you can actually just move it out of the way <laughs> because we don't need to see it we just need to access it and the way that we're accessing it or getting it into Ecamm is I'm using NDI scan converter so I did a video all about NDI scan converter but uh, what this does is it allows us to grab any window and incidentally the good thing about this is when it's in presentation mode in keynote in window then it is still the same aspect ratio it's the right aspect ratio that what we want to fit in our presentation so now I can come down here to keynote and then I can grab that window so that is the window we want and now as if by magic if I come over to my uh, little scene that I set up my presentation demo which is this one you can see I've got my slides in the background. I've put my little border overlay around it. I'm not going to go into how I've done all of that because uh, I've got plenty of videos about overlays and things like that. I've got my little uh, view up here in the top corner. In fact, let me come out of demo mode to show you now because this is the whole point of this scene at the end of the day. <laughs> so now you can see, uh, whoops, a daisy, I don't want to move that. I uh, meant to grab the window then, but I inadvertently just uh, moved things out of the way instead. There we go. So I've got my uh, little window at the top for uh, my little face <laughs> or big face, whichever way you look at it. And then I've got my top down shot so that I can show you my uh, clicker. <laughs> How about that? And then I've got my slides in the background. Now, uh, if I have clicked in Ecamm Live and then I'm, whoops, Daisy, it's actually clicking through the scenes. So that was a placeholder that I had for a previous live stream. So if I've selected Ecamm Live, and by that, what I mean is Ecamm Live is the active application in the top corner. Here you can see in the very top corner somewhere Ecamm Live. Uh, then this remote is going to work for that. Similarly, if I had gone into my uh, uh, audio hijack application, then this would be you uh, controlling that because bear in mind this is actually at the end of the day just keystrokes. So it would be pressing the up and down arrows in that particular application. So what we need to do is when you are doing a presentation like this, you do need to make sure that actually your keynote is the applica active application. So I've just clicked into my keynote and now my little clicker will scroll through this uh, demo presentation that I just grabbed a sample off a off keynote. And now as I press the forward and backwards arrows, they go forwards and backwards through the slides. And so that is in a nutshell, uh, how to set up the uh, R400 <laughs> and it's the same story for the R800 as well uh, that also will work with the Mac.
So I hope that if you have been experiencing uh, difficulties getting the R400 set up, or if you have been to the Logi Logitech site and seen that it is not listed as compatible, I'm hoping that that helps. But please, if you have gone through all of these uh, all of these steps and it's still not working or still having an issue, then let me know because I've done a bit more research into this. Obviously, since getting the comment, I was quite. Uh, I was quite worried after I got the comment that uh, maybe there was something changed in it and it had become uh, incompatible since the version that I bought. But this is the same model number. <laughs> and uh, so it does seem that it is indeed still working. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have found this useful, uh, or as I say, if you're having any uh, issues still, then please do uh, do get in touch. Leave a comment down in the uh, comments box below. And if you found it useful, then please like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel while you're there. And uh, also turn on notifications uh, so that you get alerted when I make any new videos. Uh, that's all for this video, but don't go anywhere because there are some more great videos coming up at the end. And look at that, my overlay's in completely the wrong place. Oh dear, that's very unprofessional, isn't it? Never mind. See you in the next video. I'll fix it for then.